The powerful ego center, my favorite center. You can guess that it is defined in my human design chart. My name's Nicola Henderson. I am a four, six splenic projector with the channel of surrender, which gives me definition in my spleen through to the ego. I'm on the right angle cross of Eden. I am on the roof at the moment in my um, six line, three phase life cycle. And today I'm going to share with you um, a short video on the ego center. And it, I will outline whether it's defined or undefined to try and help you gain a deeper understanding of how to feel and think about this center. Something that I really love to do and that has been a huge part of my own human design journey and my process has been um, connecting in with each center and 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 seeing how they show up for me. Um, first, I had to get quite a solid understanding of what each center stood for, the energy in each center. Um, and then once that was sort of bedded in me or integrated, um, I'm now able to check in with each of my centers and just see how they're going. And it's also a lot easier for me to see when I am being conditioned and sort of the state of my overall health through that, through the center as well. Say if I'm around a defined root or if I'm around a defined solar plexus, et cetera. So it's been really helpful in my journey to be sure. Now I have a slideshow that I'm going to share very shortly here. It's just a few slides uh, for some visuals. Um, and full transparency, um, I joined Toastmasters earlier this year, and it's quite fun. And I did a speech on um, the ego center. It's this, what I'm going to be saying to you today. And I bombed out. Uh, and so just so that all of my hard work doesn't go to waste, this is what I'm going to be sort of riffing off. I'm not going to be reading it verbatim, and I'll be adding some of my own little bits in there now that I'm not on a particular schedule or time limit that I'm trying to stick to of five to seven minutes. Um, but I was really proud of myself and how I put this together so succinct, so succinctly, and it just feels like a waste um, to just deliver a speech that was terrible. So I will share my screen and we'll kick off. Um, I welcome any comments um, and shares, of course. All right. Um, here we go. Uh, all righty. So I'm assuming that you have some idea of human design because you're here. Um, and uh, if you've got your chart in front of you, great, because we're going to be talking about the ego center. We're going to just very briefly go into the gates and what they mean. But more so, I'm going to go into the energy, what the ego center stands for and what it's like defined or undefined and what you can be aware of either way. And just remember that I am an ego being. So it's coming from this lens, okay? Um, I find, you know, if you can't really experience it, like I can't really experience, I can see what it might be like to have a defined root, but I don't have a defined root. So it's kind of all theory transits do come along and you know being an aura with people and you get a different sense of it but it's not the same as having your own definition so this is coming through my own personal definition um, I do my very best to stay um, to share from this place but of course take knowledge from the source um, so as you can see that there is nine centers in the body graph um and if you have a look at your ego center, you'll see that it's either colored in um, or it's going to be white or open. So the terminology I'll be referring to here, the white centers are called undefined centers and the colored in centers are called defined. They, they're, you can use the word open or undefined for centers that are white in your chart. Um, technically, if you have no gate activations in a white center, it's open. But if you have some gate activations, but it's still open or still white, it's undefined. Okay. Alrighty. So we've got the heart center here, also known as the ego center or the will center. I prefer to call it the ego. Um, so when looking at the body graph, it may remind you of chakras, which is 
the origination of this design from the seven centered chakra design. And we're now in the more evolved nine centered design. So there is this lingo in human design, depending how much you follow it, the nine, you know, nine centered beings, seven centered beings, really the whole vibe of being nine centered is what this knowledge gives you, which is I am my own unique individual being. I am my, I am my own authority. I make my own decisions. I follow my own rules. I do what the fuck I want to do. And you do what the fuck you want to do. And I honor you and you honor me. And we all have a happy day. Um, as opposed to homogenized, you know, getting up at 5 a.m. is the best time in the world for everybody to wake up. Nobody should ever eat past 7 p.m. Fasting 12 hours a day is the best way. You know, all of this very homogenized, seven-centered beingness is bullshit, in my opinion. But this sort of encourages you and shows you how to live your own way, which is nine-centered. So the ego is, uh, oh, hold on, here we are. Yeah, okay. So the ego is one of four motors in the chart. What that means is that it gives you energy and you can tap into your willpower to get things done. So the other motors are the, oh, you can't see my cursor, but we've got the sacral, the solar plexus and the root, the four motors there. The energy of the ego center or the will center is limited and it works to rest. So um, what this means is that it can like sort of put the pedal to the metal for a little while and then it, it cannot go anymore. It needs to stop. <laughs> so it works to rest. Okay. So if you have defined ego, you will know exactly what I mean by just remembering that and then just noticing how that plays out for you. And the more that you honor your energy levels, et cetera, the more that you will see how true that is. Cause when I first heard it, I was like, don't get it, whatever, just skim. There's so much that I just skimmed over when I was first learning this knowledge for starting my journey that, you know, it's only over time when you really start to experience it, that you, that it deep that you under, that you deepen your understanding of things so you can think of the will energy as a higher octane fuel that you can kick on if you have this center defined however if you keep pushing yourself the energy will run out and you will burn out massively i notice that if i'm leaning on my willpower for a day and i'm feeling sort of quite i wake up in the morning and i feel fine but when i check in with my ego or my will center it's just like Bruh. I'm like, all right, I cannot push myself today. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to hurt myself, right? So the energy of this center, the will center, carries an inner grit, strength, competitiveness. It knows what it wants and also definitely knows what it does not want. Um, I really get a kick out of saying no. I love to say no, but I have the two denial gates I have so my center is defined in my chart and I have gate 26 and gate 40 so it's denial as in loving to say no which the ego just loves to say in general um but I also have to be very conscious of where I'm not seeing stuff and I'm living in denial because that's definitely a thing as well so it's not to say that people with an undefined ego don't have an inner fortitude to them. However, the flavor is very different. It's softer and more subtle in undefined ego people. And it's less sort of pushy and bossy. It's less like, I'm here, fuck you, what's next? That's sort of very ego. Um, and I'm going to just sort of segue and just share a bit of my own experience with this. So when I was um, younger, it really wasn't encouraged to be so willful. Um, and so I really sort of shrunk myself down for my basically like 30 years. Um, and whilst I didn't have unhealthy ego energy, like I don't think it was yucky to people who had an open ego and were, would have been sort of sampling that, or I wouldn't have necessarily felt overly egoic in a yucky way. It was definitely the expression and maturity of it was stunted and it's taken me months of sort of letting it run wild and play um to mature it 
you sort of have to run yourself through. Like if something happens and you're stuck, like even if you just take art, you stop painting at the age of 11 and then you pick up a paintbrush again at 40, you're going to paint a bit like an 11 year old, aren't you? Same thing with our personal growth and all of this stuff, but it doesn't, it's not that it's going to take you 29 years to get really, really good. If you're 40 picking up a paintbrush, it doesn't take so long, but you know, we have to go through and we have to um, do what we need to do. And for me, it was really just showing up in a way that felt sort of uncomfortable. I show up a lot on Instagram and whatnot. And um, it felt good like putting up a pretty picture of myself or like doing a silly reel of me, you know, being a bit sexy, singing a song. Um, but yeah, I mean, the flip side of that was it sort of literally healed the sugar addiction that I've been battling for 30 years. And um, I'm just so much more solid in myself. I can't even tell you. It's really, really amazing. So putting that out there for you. I do work with people one-on-one, -on -one, by the way. Um, yes, here we go. So there are four gates coming off the heart center. They give you a deeper flavor of the energy of this center. Okay. So as I said before, we have, um, like competitiveness, um, inner grit, strength, knowing what it wants, saying no. So gate 21 at the top there is the gate of the hunter or huntress, biting through. This is where the Chinese I Ching comes in, by the way, the 64 hexagrams correlate to the 64 gates that we see through the human design body graph. So the energy of this gate 21 is to be in control and to control the circumstances. These people love to be the boss. They're not shy about it and they're very good at it. Well, hopefully. Gate 26, the taming power of the great, the gate of the egoist or selfishness, one of my gates, to be the best a natural salesperson or marketer. I was gonna make some comment around like, yeah, I am the best. but I won't go down that path because I'll look very, um, no, fuck it. I have 44 as well, 44 point something, which is where the 26 connects to and it's uh, lording over others, which isn't very nice. However, um, I'm just happily sure of myself. And I think that that's really, really important energy to have in this world. So I'm just doing the world a good service. Gate 40, deliverance, the gate of solitude and aloneness, the will to provide and deliver, part of the channel of community. So there's sort of like a pound of flesh vibe going on here. Um, but it really is, I mean, the 26 is about money, 40 is we're down into um different tribal space. Um, but it's about work. It's about work, deliverance. Gate 51. The arousing, the gate of shock, to be competitive, to be first at something. They're they're real competitive, those people. All right. So the defined ego. So you will have a defined ego center or not. You will have some gate of active gate activations. This is my chart, by the way. You will have some gate activations in the center or not. Your design expresses uniquely through the lens of your whole chart but also through the lens of your life experiences. I will explain. As I started saying before, when I was a child, I was stubborn and willful and my mother did not favor this behavior. So I did what people often do when they're told that something they're doing is wrong. I changed, I shrunk my willpower down and now I'm unshrinking it. Well, I wrote this a couple months ago and I have even more unshrunken it um it's just sort of normal now is how it feels which is great defined ego people are here to prove themselves with a defined ego i am here to prove myself this energy of proving myself is consistent and reliable in me 
Now with no filter, my ego is demanding, bossy, brassy, loves to say no and take charge. It's direct, unapologetic, noisy, and loves money and power. This is me. It's a part of who I am. But of course, there is such a thing as unhealthy ego energy. And I think we all know what that feels like too, right? If you have a defined heart, ego will center. It's important to keep your word when you say you will do things. People will inherently expect this from you. This is a part of the mechanics and the energetics through the, through the chart. However, if your ego is undefined, I encourage you not to make promises. And it's okay to cancel plans if you have to. With an undefined ego, you are not here to be willful. You are here to become wise about willful energy. Ra uh, talked about, I mean, he talked a lot about the ego center, of course. He's a very proud ego manifester. And um, he said that people with an undefined ego, they have nothing to prove in this life. And it's like, they can just, instead of this being this crazy burden, because it is the most... Um, conditioned center this is where there's so much conditioning to contend with if it's open in your chart or undefined um, but you're basically look at it as being on vacation this life where you have nothing to prove if your ego center is open or undefined you're on vacation you got nothing to prove just go and do your thing easy right of course you have value Now, the undefined ego center. Every center that is white in your chart promotes not self tendencies through the mind. Not self means this energy is not reliable in you. It is not really you in this lifetime. Uh, and not self to clarify that the not, I mean, The not self of the ego is fearing and trying to prove, fearing that you don't have value or worth and tr trying your darndest to prove that you do. So these people are constantly spending money on coaches and all of these things to try and feel like they can finally help other people or do this or do that or prove their worth or all of the things. Um. That's the not self, the not self of the solar plexus, for example, and I'm going to come to this in a moment is avoiding confrontation and truth, but an undefined solar plexus like mine is becomes very wise about emotion, pleasure, all of these wonderful things. So the not self is the spokesperson. The mind is the spokesperson of the not self. And basically what that means is the mind in human design is the ego in when you think of like every other traditional thing, when they talk about ego with like Carl Jung and all of this, how it's sort of demonized in a way. Um, that's what human design calls the mind. Um, the mind is not villainized. It's just not meant to be used to try and fix what you're not. You have nothing to fix if you have an opener and defined ego, but your mind will tell you that you do. That is the not self. I will continue. So if where you have openness in your chart, we're talking about the ego here. Um, this energy is not reliable in you. It is not really you in this lifetime. However, because we're all kind of obsessed with what we're not, we think about it a lot and also think there's something wrong with us because we don't inherently possess this energy. The not self keynote for the undefined ego is feeling unworthy and undervalued. The question I pose to those with an undefined ego is, are you still trying to prove your worth? This is the shadow of the undefined ego. The key for these people is to know that they have nothing to prove ever whatsoever and every thought that comes into your mind that says that you do is part of the not self trying to control and manipulate you with thoughts that do not need to be responded to. We never get rid of the not self. We just get better at witnessing the lunacy without reacting. Interesting. 
If I were to anthropomorphize the ego, imagine for a moment that you're sitting at a table. You're sitting at the top as the self, as the witness, with all the other nine centers sitting, sitting around the table with you. So you as the witness, the one observing all of this, right? If your ego is defined, it would be presenting as ironclad, strong, and willful about what it wants. And it does not question its value or worth. But if your ego is undefined, it would appear as relaxed, laid back, watching everything and all the other defined egos running around with a small knowing smile on its face. Idiots, it might think. The ego is secure. The undefined ego is secure. And the last question it would try to answer would be, do I have value? So I really want to honor the uniqueness that you bring. You probably don't struggle with your ego if it's defined. Um, I hope that if you do have a defined ego, that this has made you fall in love with it and understand it a little bit more. Uh, it's it's noisy. It's louder than my spleen. But now that I know that it's louder than my spleen, I can continue trying to parse through <laughs> what my body tells me. And if it, your ego is undefined, I really hope that that comment around being on vacation in this life has helped you because um, there's such a a potency to the relaxed, I have nothing to prove, vibe that you guys bring. It's really, really delicious and powerful and strong. So I hope you can embrace that. Um, and then these are the, I've pinched this from Jovian, as you can see, I think it's a great uh, graphic but you can see the not self of all the other of their open centers. Um, and again, I remember when I was first learning this knowledge and I was looking at all these, I was like, I didn't understand where these things, like how they correlated to the chart, um, like on mybodygraph.com or whatever. Um, they give you the not self themes. And I was like, how do they know all this about me? Like, where does it say this in the chart? Well, it's right here. So if you have an open head thinking about things that don't matter, you don't know what to think about. You don't know what questions are yours to answer. So it's like shiny things. My open head is like, oh, shiny things. Oh, shiny things. So you can imagine, I call my spiritual awakening that I've been on over the last few years. It's shifted a lot in the last six months. I would say I kind of like went really deep into human design. Kind of like ditched everything spiritual. And now I'm just kind of, pulling the pieces back in together and just seeing how I want to arrange things now. And I'm, it's, it's fucking awesome. So, um, yeah. So my, that whole spiritual awakening journey was like an open head heyday. You can imagine it's like, what the fuck? Aliens are real. There is such a thing as past lives. What were all my past lives? Like, this is crazy. It's crazy. Right. And I'm not saying that this stuff doesn't matter, but I can just see how intensely my open head was latching onto all of the things. And now um, I know a lot better and I can guide people a lot better because of that experience that I've had. I mean, where we have openness in our chart, where we have white centers, it's where we're going to school and um, it's where we become very wise. So I have seven open centers, so I'm going to a lot of schools and I'm very wise. And I'm a four six, so uh, I'm the role model too. So next one down, the Ajna pretending to be certain. So this is like the data center. It's where we attach meaning to things, where we conceptualize. The head center is more about inspiration. The Ajna, um, so pretending to be certain is uh, if it's open, you don't have reliable and consistent. You don't. Your mind is not reliable and consistent. So when, by pretending to be certain, like, so you're not here to think, okay, you're not here to think if you have an open Ajna, pretending to be certain because the mind is very insecure about not having consistent and reliable energy there, but having an open mind is wonderful 
right? You become, and you become very wise about other people. Like I met someone recently with a very strong mind. Okay. Two channels coming down to the throat. Um, but they were so fixed, so fixed. Cause that's what happens where you have definition is you're fixed. You're on a fixed track, but where you're open, you're taking in anything and everything all around you through transits, through people in aura with you, you know, familiar conditioning, public aura conditioning. You're taking it all in, you're sampling it all. You become very wise. Next one down throat, trying to attract attention. This is the gearbox center of manifestation. All roads lead to Rome being the throat. If it's open or undefined, well, you're not really heard unless you're asked to speak first. And that is a mind fuck. I remember so much growing up, like I'd be in a room with people and I'd say something and I'd just be completely ignored. And I'd be like, should I just go and crawl into that rock? Does literally nobody care about what I have to say? Am I really that useless? Am I really that unwanted? No, girl, your throat's open. But what happens is to try and compensate for this is people, as soon as they get the stage, they're like, but they literally don't know what to sh when to shut up. And this trying to attract attention, like is not just in speaking, it's like in any way in your life. So if your throat is open, uh, just notice all of the sneaky little ways that you have created like behaviors of trying to attract attention because they pop up for me sometimes. And it's just like, oh my God, I was really trying to attract attention there. And there's like a, there's a familiar flavor of the not self uh, yeah, with these centers, when you're expressing sort of quite, well, not from the not self, when you're expressing very sort of neutrally and from a, a reliable space. Um, I'm getting tired now. I will say though, so I'm going to keep going. I have had a bit of a big day as a projector. I'm winding down. Cause I don't have a lot of my ego at the moment to willpower me up through this. Okay. I continue the G center fixated on finding love and direction. I mean, this is where the magnetic monopole sits. That's a talk for another day. Such a, such a, such an interesting piece. Um, so the G is also called the identity center or the self center. Um, the monopole is what um, sort of aligns us to our correct life path and it holds us together in the illusion. <laughs> um, it's very important, but when it's open or undefined, we don't have a fixed sense of direction in our life. And the mind doesn't like that for obvious reasons. Um, so we, we become pretty obsessed and fixated on finding love and direction. So if you've got an open G and you're like that girl, just quit it. You got to quit it. You got to realize when it's happening and you got to stop because that ain't that, that is not a question for you to answer. That is not anything you are, you are here to be fluid. You are not here to have a fixed sense of direction and love in this life. And there's a lot of um, fun and liberation that can be found in that. We've talked a lot, a lot about the heart today. Do I think I have something to prove? Solar plexus, avoiding confrontation and truth. I mean, this is a major one, big, 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 big conditioning opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> you want to call them opportunities. Um, and what that means is, I mean, just because you might have an open or undefined solar plexus doesn't mean that you don't feel things. In fact, you feel things a lot more than people who are defined in the center. And that is why you avoid confrontation and truth because you are petrified about taking in somebody else's inflamed anger or frustration, et cetera. Um, and having to deal with that, it's super fucking overwhelming. I know you know what I mean if you have an open solar plexus. That's why we avoid the possibility of it possibly happening again. The key though, this is important, the key is, well, you gotta 
do a, a, a real check on, well, is this a conversation that I really need to have? And if the answer is yes, you just got to have it. And then you remember that anything that you feel, it's not yours. You can let it pass through like a screen door. And this gets better. We, as we, as we go and we learn to feel more, um, we sort of become a little more resilient within ourselves. That's how I found it for myself anyways. The sacral, I mean, so non-sacral beings, holy moly, there can be a fair bit of conditioning here too, not knowing when enough is enough. Well, this plays out in a lot of different ways in my life as well. Um, going and going and going and suddenly you're exhausted it is no good i'm a projector if you're a non-energy type to find yourself exhausted it's not good don't do it okay um i have had trouble knowing when enough is enough with a lot of alcohol with food with all sorts of things not just work not just energy output okay uh, the root, always in a hurry to be free of the pressure. Well, this is the center of adrenalized energy, pressurized energy. It's pulsing. If I just finish this list, if I just push through and tap into that last little drop of willpower to get everything done, I can finally relax you can't you'll never be free of the pressure it's a trap it's a trap it's a trap as alakanan diaz says when the pressure is gone you'll be dead and that's it so you just got to get better at living with pressure and recognizing that when you're feeling it whether it's coming from someone else Hey, do you uh, know what you want to have for dinner tonight? Stop putting so much pressure on me. I say this to people all the time. And then I had my mom stay with me for six weeks. who has a defined root. Oh my God. I was snapping. I didn't even know what was happening for the first week. I didn't even know what was happening. Then I was just like, oh my God. It's because I feel like she's like pressuring me, but she's not. She's asking me like simple, sweet, innocuous questions. So it's that too. Um, yeah. So, you know, don't hurt yourself by rushing faster than everyone else because you will be with an undefined route. Don't hurt yourself, okay? Because you do not have the energy to sustain. You don't, you don't. You can go for a short spurt and then you'll be done. Okay, last one, spleen, holding on to what isn't good for you. Well, this is drawn from because the spleen is the center of well-being and health and intuition. Um, and people who have this open or undefined, um, well, they don't really feel like they have what it, they what what it takes to survive on this planet. And that's a pretty gnarly feeling, isn't it? So say you're an undefined being, undefined spleen being. This is an example Ra gives. And you've grown up and, but your mom had a defined spleen. So you always felt like you had a good sense of well-being with her. It was all fine. It was all okay. But then you leave home and then you meet someone who, you know, and you sort of start to have this, this, um, maybe it's like a, I don't know if it would be an existential angst, perhaps. <laughs> Basically, like quite a fear around your, your general health and well-being. Um, yeah, and feeling like you don't have what you need to survive. Um, and each gate off the spleen is a fear gate, and it will sort of color what that experience is like for you. Um, but then say you meet someone and they have a defined spleen like your mom and you feel really good in that relationship. So holding on to what isn't good for you, say they're like an absolute C-U-N-T, but they have a defined spleen that feels good for you. It is hard to leave that relationship. You see what I mean? Holding on to what isn't good for you. So being aware of these mechanics can make life a lot easier. So um, I really hope that that was helpful. How do I stop this share?
what's going on? Yeah, you can't see me mouse. There we go. Stop, share. Okay, we're on. We're back on. Hi. Um, yeah, I hope that this was interesting for you. Thank you for being here and playing along with me. Um, if any of this res resonated, I would love to hear. My website is nicolahenderson.co. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions. I'm on Instagram, Project Queen with a W. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or night.